Hello Europe and bon dia and bon dia to all y'all Portuguese speakers. It's William calling from Movie Blogs and I'm joined by Patrick in Austria and we're here to review the results of Festival da Canção, the Portuguese national selection for Eurovision. Now Patrick, as you know, Leonor Andrada won with her song How Marca No Separa. Um, there's a sea that separates us. What do you think? Well, actually, uh, Leonor is a great singer. She's famous in Portugal as she was on The Voice. Um, she had many fans, uh, and I thought, and I think that she had the most modern song out of the of the songs. Um, she stood out because of that, and uh, her voice is n strong, not that strong as the other ones who were in the competition, uh, like uh, Simon or Yola, but. Uh, I think she was the best for Eurovision as it was modern and it was it's 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 perfect for the time. Yeah, I agree it's the most modern track. I think she does have a strong voice. Um I'm really liking the sassy rock energy. There's there's pop rock edge to this. Um it, it it's a huge step toward 2015 for Portugal. Um, traditionally, you know, putting Susie aside, they've gone very old world, Fado-esque, um, women screeching in pain. It's nice to see something a bit brighter. I don't know bright is the right word, a bit more modern, certainly. Um, nothing could be as bright as Susie was last year. But yeah, I, I think they went for modernity. That said, I'm not convinced this is the best song to have won. Um, Modern's fine, but if you do Old World right, it can be even better. And they had some amazing songs in this contest that harked back to Old World Portugal. Um, we'll turn to those in a second. I guess, ultimately, I think with Leonor, there is a sea that separates us. There's something about this I don't connect with. I think it, it repeats too much. It doesn't change. There's no dynamism. I'm worried they may not make the final. Yeah, there is no really big climax in the song. They should really, and she should improve her vocals. Like she is good at the beginning, but the chorus is really low with the vocal, and in Eurovision it won't stand out with that. So she needs to improve her, and the song itself should be improved as well, remastered. And in Eurovision, I don't think that they will go to the final. Um, maybe they will be placed like twelfth or thirteenth, but I think no final for Portugal again. Yeah, this doesn't stand out. Suzy Guerra stood out. This will get lost in the sea of songs, uh, which is a shame. Now, the other songs that made the super final last night were Teresa Radamanto with Um Faro in Vienna and Gonzalo Tavares with Tenzuma Magica. You have magic. Now, let's start with Teresa. I thought this was really strong. It's very traditional, and her voice fits it so well. And even though it's traditional, it didn't bore me. I thought there was real power in this. Like, her voice is on point. Um, I don't know if the title, A Fado for Vienna, <laughs> is like, mm. Like, there, there, is always, there are always songs with a Fado in, 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 in it. And um, I think Teresa had the best one out of those Fado songs. She was really strong with the voice. She had a really nice composed song. It was a bit boring, actually. Uh, it, I mean, the chorus is nice and really strong. And in the end, of course, it's, it's good. But... I didn't feel it so much uh, as I felt Leonor um, and the song. So basically, uh, it was good, but in, it would have uh, have had the same effect in Eurovision as Leonor. Yeah, I feel like for those of us outside of Portugal, this song sounds very been there, done that, because we can't distinguish between fados. So yeah, probably the best choice not to send it. Now, the third act in the super final, which is proving a bit divisive, is Gonzalo Tavares <laughs> with You Have Magic. This was a hot mess. I mean, when it started, you see a man on a keyboard with his legs spread. It's like an advertisement for Roland keyboards. Did you see that product placement? <laughs> they clearly sponsored this act. Um, but then it kind of picked up. Women wearing panties came out and started dancing. It was very Eurovision. Um, and I think they were trying to go for an updated song here, but maybe the mix of old and new doesn't work <laughs> in this instance. I quite enjoyed this. I thought it was entertaining. And I was surprised that the jury picked it as their winner because um, it's such the anti-Portuguese traditional Eurovision song. That said, I did enjoy it, so I can't throw shade. He he's just very likable. Well, I, I think it was really dated. Like Portugal had so many songs like this in the 80s and the 90s and they never placed well. Um, so I think they would, uh, he wouldn't place well with that in 2015 either. So uh, it was a good decision not sending him. Um, I was surprised that the jury uh, saved him to the super final because the people didn't like him, obviously. He wasn't in the top two. So, um, yeah, it surprised me. And it was, it was really a hot mess. Like, he, he was not good vocally, only the backing vocalists. 
made it comfortable for him, but it was a mess. I didn't like it. <laughs> and moving on, there were acts that did not make the super final, and I think we were both shocked, and I'm sure much of the Eurovision fan community was shocked, that Yola Dennis did not make the final with Utra Vez Primavera, again spring. I mean, to me, this was, this was in bloom. She had a flower on the microphone. If I was a bee, I would land on it. I would rub my whole body on those petals. I would listen to her sing all night. She has the perfect voice for this kind of song. It feels very Portuguese, and yet it would be accessible to people outside of Portugal. Two minutes in, when she hits that note and she holds it, I nearly died, y'all. This was power. I just, I don't know who let her down. I, the, well, the public, obviously. I don't know why they let her down. Well, she's like Vania Fernandez from 2009, with Jora Dumar. was a strong song, and she was strong, really strong this time. Uh, Yola is, was a, like a no-name in Portugal, so I think that hurt her a bit. But yeah, it was obviously one of the best songs this, this night. She had the strongest voice of the competition. Um, she nailed her vocals so much, and the public in the arena, they loved her. And uh, in the end, when she picked the flower from the microphone into her hands, and it was perfect. It was, uh, it was dramatic. It was fado. It was perfect. I, I, I'm shocked that she didn't even make the super final. I can't believe the jury didn't save this. I mean, they're musical experts, and this, you feel something instantly. It's just, I, I can't believe it. But the, the um, uh, jury, the, the composers, they saved uh, Gonzalo only because the composers of his songs are really famous, and they're really... Friends. It's, it's a friendship thingy. It's always the same in Portugal, sadly. <sighs> Yola sounds like YOLO. You only live once. Yola, <laughs> we need you back at Festival da Canção next year. Definitely. Now, I think one other act we had our eye on was Simone de Oliveira with A Espera da Canção, something like that. You know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> waiting for the songs. Now, this was amazing. She's like, what, 80 years old, 90 years old? She's up there. And she's like Liz Asia with a tan, but she's still moving. She's still singing. She actually looks like the world's oldest supermodel, Carmine Del Orifice. Cue the picture. You see that? It's amazing. Um, but she has the voice. This, again, was a traditional song, but she delivered it perfectly. The audience was clapping before she was even finished. And I don't think it's just because she's old. I think it's because they were blown away by a talented lady. She may have a walker, but she's still kicking. She's still bringing it. Yeah, and Simone was already in Eurovision in the 60s, I think twice. And she still knows how it works. She, she knows how she has to act with the song. She, how, it, You saw that she feels with the song. And... Her voice is still amazing. I can't believe that with 77 years, years you have that voice. Many, many artists are really going down with the voice even in the 50s. And she's there, nearly 80, and she's there. And yeah, people loved it, obviously, but not the public voters. I don't know. There was the rumor that she, if she wins, she gives the title to a younger one. I don't know if that maybe hurt her. The people said, okay, not vote for her because she's not going to represent us anyways. I don't know. But she was amazing. I mean, you can't teach what she has. You're either born with that or you're not. And she was obviously born with it. At 1 minute 50 in this video, she's like, look into my eyes. And let me tell you, I was looking into her eyes. I just, I'm really shocked this didn't make the super final. Definitely. Uh, many people thought she's going to win. And I was like, okay, if she wins, it, maybe it's not the best song for the victory. But the super final, it was obviously, she would have been deserved to be there. So I was shocked, really. Well, that's what we think. What do you guys think? You can let us know here on Wee Blogs and on our YouTube channel, WeeWee.tv. Be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and Tumblr at Wee Blogs. We'll see you later. Bye!